on my own, pretending he's beside me. All alone, I walk with him till morning. A big thanks uh, to NerdWallet for hosting yet another Creative Mornings event. Um, creative endeavors need really strong enablers, so thank you for that. Rita, you are a real gem. Thank you for all of your help um, and for suggesting that I give this talk today. Um, I also have my really lovely two um, co-founders in the audience, Matt and Christian of Little Mission Studio. If you wish to have a pleasant music chat with them after the talk, I'm sure they would be happy to oblige. And then last but not least, um, my lovely uh, and also very creative partner, Carl. Uh, thank you for also um, supporting all of my crazy ideas. <clears throat> now let's get to it. I was kind of an odd kid. Uh, I was a bit nerdy and in everyone's faces with like a million questions. <laughs> I had giant glasses and was homeschooled for a while. I mean, I mean, look at this denim on denim amazing <laughs> combo I'm rocking in this picture. And I think that's a stick I picked off, up off the ground. I was like, I must conduct. Um, no offense to homeschoolers, but I had no idea who the Spice Girls were going into public junior high school, which I think was some serious social suicide at the time. I was I had no idea. Like calling boys and like hanging up, like that's not something I did at that point. <laughs> I had no idea that that's what th things were people were doing. Um, I also always remember having music in my life as a way of channeling my inner weirdness at the time, an outlet for me when other things didn't make sense. Now, you might hear that and say, well, she was compelled. Some people are just born with this urge to sing, as if I had won the genetic lottery. Sure, there are some musical things that I was born with, such as a very high interest in music, um, but the rest I learned from lots of hard work and dedication to singing. It's like an instrument that you develop like anything else. My talk today will hopefully dispel some fears and concerns you might have about singing, or maybe just confirm what you've already felt when you're singing in the shower. I want you to be brave and to discover your voice because it is always there for you, an instrument that literally lives inside of you and can be a vessel for immeasurable joy. Let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> We really didn't care that much about singing in public when we were children. In fact, most of us learned our, our ABCs by singing them in school. Let's go ahead and sing that together right now. Okay, so A, this is our starting note. Okay, so here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Great job. <laughs> nice. That was really good. That was beautiful. Um, how many of you guys felt really nervous doing that, like having just to suddenly sing? Raise your hands. Oh, OK. Not too many of you. I like it. Good. OK. <laughs> Um, children are so much fun to teach singing to because they don't really care that much about doing something perfectly the first time. Society has hopefully given them a pass to be learning and growing and making mistakes. As we grow up, we do understand that we never leave that place of learning, but we seem to put so much more pressure on ourselves. We become less spontaneous, more careful, more playful, because we become or are taught to think that we need to be, that we need to be greater, better, faster, uh, more successful, more perfect, more, more, more. I really dislike that phrase, being perfect. What does it even mean? <laughs> I've rarely heard the phrase in conjunction with something positive or something someone can really describe. 
Perfection is a really abstract concept. Does perfection mean that you are better than anyone else? Does it mean you are strictly adhering to a standard set by others? When you imagine being perfect, does it fill you with happiness or with anxiety? I have a very mean, perfect voice in my head, and it's very creative. It comes up with all sorts of different things to tell me every day. And I work at squelching it every day. And sometimes it wins, and sometimes it loses. It's just there. We all have that voice, and it tells us different things. But the effect is the same. Our mean, perfect voice keeps us from doing really good things for ourselves. While I may not feel this joyful, amazing feeling every time I sing, this quote describes a good example of that feeling, that it is possible to feel beautiful, uncomplicated joy when you sing. Singing in a choir won't kill you. With a choir, you can take a breath and escape physically and metaphysically, occupying and occupied by the music. When you return to the rest of life, all that remains is an echo, an overtone, a brief silence, and then applause. You're back, and it's as if you skipped forward an hour in time. If it weren't for that, the residue, that telltale joy, and the sense that some part of your life has been gladly surrendered, you know you were there, even if you weren't completely, exactly there at all. This joyful and uncomplicated feeling is what transported me into a lifelong career with music and a passion for helping others find their beautiful and perfect singing voices. Yes, voices are all imperfect, bizarre, and somewhat unpredictable. Your voice is a wind instrument that lives inside your complex and constantly changing body. You see, I look at all people and I see the potential for some kind of creative practice. While this is my part as a, a voice teacher at Little Mission Studio, there are varying levels of skill depending on many factors. But one thing has become very clear to me. We all have a voice and that we can use and cultivate. And that voice is a very important thing to discover in oneself. It can open up all these other avenues in self-expression. Um, people have expressed more comfort with themselves in complicated ways, like feeling more authentic and more open, and in simple ways as being more com comfortable public speakers. I think that learning to sing in a group or learning to sing a melody with purpose and with care is just as important as the first time you danced with a group of people or the first time that you rode a bike. It's a rite of passage that should not go ignored. Somewhere along the way, we decided that some voices were more important than others. Some voices were more worthy than others, and these voices somehow transport us to magical places that others do not. Here's some examples. So maybe you had a, a mean family member say something to you, or a really good friend say something to you maybe casually, and it was like not so nice, and it just silenced you forever. Um, <laughs> even the closest people feel entitled to this judgment because probably somewhere along the way, somebody did it to them. Another great example of this relatively new phenomenon is the outpouring of singing shows on TV. There have always been singing comp competition shows on TV, but now we have scary, non-musically educated cele celebrities publicly shaming people on national television for sharing their natural voices. Saying things like, that was horrible, just horrible. I thought it was like some terrible, ghastly high school musical performance. Last year, I described someone being the worst singer in America. I think you are possibly the worst singer in the world. You have invented a new form of torture. <laughs> now, you might chuckle at the intensity of this, his dry and biting delivery. I also happen to think that just some things sound more intense with a British accent. <laughs> but deep down, we can't help but think, do I sound like that person? He's humiliating. Should I be ashamed? How can we witness those highly constructed, edited moments and not be afraid of the singing bullies of the world? People who have no real understanding of the instrument and are so entitled and judgmental. I believe that that type of energy is very damaging to us as a human family. That judgment is beaming into our homes, 
telling us that the vulnerable, the people that share themselves in creative ways, are not enough and should be silenced. Being accepted is not part of our current culture of singing. Singing has started to become a competition where there are winners and there are losers. And we are out of control in this way. Let's talk about how people used to think about singing. Now, I'm not a historian, but I bet all of you will be able to relate in some way to these images. Just imagine that you're wearing your Pride and Prejudice gown and we're sitting in the, in the living room playing the pianoforte. That's one of them. Or maybe you sung with a very young Judy Garland. Maybe you sung duets. I don't know who that girl is behind her, but I know that's Judy Garland. <laughs> How many of you had a piano in your house growing up or had a grandparent in their house or a friend? Yeah, oh my god, look at all those pianos. Awesome. Pianos for hundreds of years were a huge source of entertainment for people before we had all these little gizmos interrupting us all of the time. In fact, it was considered super odd if you didn't know how to entertain the party in some way with a musical instrument. If you were truly worth your salt as a human being, you knew how to sit down at the piano and play at least a few songs and, si and guiding the group along, singing songs with you. People drank and sang and danced together. Singing just happened naturally all of the time. I imagine that these pianos sitting in the homes of your childhood were once the center of entertainment and togetherness and a very important part of daily life. In addition, <laughs> people sing with their animals, um, people sing to their babies, um, whistling was practically an art form in the 30s and 40s, harmonizing for fun, singing rounds. We were all imperfect, but yet we all, we all did it anyway. Voices weren't amazing, but we did it. Today we still understand the importance of singing in a, gr in a group together, but it doesn't seem to happen as frequently. But singing is not for the few, it's for everyone. This is a clip of the Little Mission Chorus singing an arrangement of Brian McKnight, of, of a Brian McKnight song, and really just hamming it up. It's one of my favorite recordings of them performing. It's undeniable that we should be together. It's unbelievable how I used to say that I'd fall never. The basis is need to know if you don't know. Then let me show you now that I'm for real. If all the things in time, time will reveal. Yeah, cause one. That was one of the first choral groups I um, taught at Little Mission Studio, and they're just they're so great. <clears throat> so if you're going to have fun with singing, you have to be vulnerable. You have to take risks. You have to be brave to sing in today's world. If you can get past the fear and judgment and self-doubt, you can start to explore your beautiful, imperfect voice and start to have fun with it. Most of the time, new students come into chorus um, or private voice lessons carrying this weight of fear and doubt, as if there's something inside of them that might explode if they let their voices out. Part of that feeling is true. When you sing, when you release your voice on sound, it's an explosion of air and vibration. And that usually leads us to breath. So I want everybody to stand up. Come on, everybody. Stand up. <clears throat> When you sing, you take air into your lungs, okay? So let's first like firmly plant our feet in the ground, like a hip width distance apart, and then just make sure that you aren't locking your knees, and then you're just gonna lift your, the middle of your body up. So it's kind of like a popping and locking movement, but you're gonna be locked, or popped. You're gonna be popped, okay? So arms, arms hanging, yeah, good, okay. So when you take a singing breath, you take air into your lungs to the extent that your expanding lungs push your belly out, okay? 
So just remember that. Your belly should be sticking out when you breathe in. You breathe from your diaphragm, which is located right where your ribs meet on your body. So go ahead and try to find that. So your ribs are going to meet, and then you're going to find that spot, and then you're going to lift that up. And then, whew, you can start breathing if you want. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are we supposed to breathe? So take a deep breath in and let it out. Good, good. Now, the next time you try to do it, try to take an even deeper breath and make sure that this belly is expanding out. One more time. Good. Good. So I'm going to demonstrate first. I'm going to take a deep breath in, and I'm going to let it out on that belly breath on like any sound, OK? So just I'm going to show you what it is first. Ah. OK, so it doesn't have to be a pretty sound. You can be like <laughs> any sound you want it to be, OK? So we're all going to do that together. Everyone take a deep breath in. Ah. Ah. Pitches, nice. That was beautiful. Good, it's good. So stay standing. Okay. So you make sound like that all day with your voice by talking, um, and you can also talk on your breath as well. Um, to make a sound in a more musical way means that we pick a pitch from the musical alphabet or note on the staff. So the staff are the lines that you see and the spaces. That's called the staff, and then the notes are those little black dots on the staff. And the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it just repeats over and over and over again. So I'm going to pick a note from the staff, and we're going to do that again. And this time, we're just going to sustain the note that I play on one breath that we take, OK? Good. So everybody, go ahead and take a deep breath in, and we're going to do that. We're just going to do it on la. OK, so take a deep breath in. Ah. Beautiful. This means stop, by the way. <laughs> when I do this, this means stop. Okay, let's try that one more time. Let's do, um, let's do it this time, and let's try to do it a little bit louder. So even louder than we just did. So take a deep breath in. Ah. Beautiful. That was awesome. So, <clears throat> so here's a little melody on the same note. Make, I'm going to sing it, and then you guys are going to sing it back to me. Make new friends, but keep the old. Here we go. Make new friends, but keep the old. Good. Let's do that one more time. Take a deep, remember that breath? Remember how to stand? Yeah? OK, take a deep breath in. Make new friends, but keep the old. That's great. This is going to be great. I'm very excited about what's coming next. OK, <clears throat> so here's the definition of the word harmony. Um, we are going to eventually uh, sing together in some harmony. Um, this is, I'm going to read it to you. The combination of simultaneously sounded musical notes to produce chords and chord progressions having a pleasing effect agreement or concord. I love the word pleasing because it represents a more positive outcome. Let's decide that when we make sound together that we are going to be pleased with something that we do. OK? So let's take another deep breath in together. This breath is your happy place. We Singing teachers teach this breath to people because it's how you're going to get the most air into your lungs for singing. But it's also the type of breath that you take when you're really relaxed and calm and content. It's also the way that you breathe right before you fall asleep. OK, so we're also trying to convince our bodies that we're just like super chill right now. We're like, don't have any tension, and we're just breathing from right down here. OK, so this time, I want you guys to show me what it would look like if you were taking a stressed out breath. So I'm going to show you first. <gasps> oh, I'm so stressed out. <sighs> OK, so let's all take a stressed out breath together. Oh, god, I'm so stressed out. Then drop your OK, now let's try to take our nice, calm, relaxing breath one more time together. Good. <sighs> Lovely. OK. OK, so now let's relax this. Let's reinforce this relaxed breath that we've been practicing together while we sing around together called Make New Friends, which is what we've already, we've already sung the first line. OK, 
So, and eventually we are going to be in agreement or concord and make some harmony together by singing it at different times. This is how a round or a canon works, okay? So here's your starting note. Let's check it. Okay. So we're just gonna sing the first line together and then stop, okay? So here we go. Make new friends, but keep the old. Nice, okay, and then this is the second line. One is silver and the other gold. So sing it together. One is silver and the other gold. Awesome. Okay, let's try to sing both lines back to back. Okay, so make, this is our starting note. Okay, so standing up nice and straight. One more time. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. Good, you feel like you're kind of getting it? Is everyone singing in the back? Are you guys good? Okay, awesome. Yeah, Ooh, okay, good. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I want this half of the room. I want you guys, you guys are gonna be part one, and we're gonna sing through it three times. Okay, so how many times are we gonna sing through it? Three times, okay. You guys on this half of the room, you are the second half of the round, and you guys are gonna sing it how many times? Three, three times, okay. So what's gonna happen is, you guys are gonna start us off, this side of the room, and you're gonna go, make new friends, but make, and then you guys have to be ready. I'm gonna point to you like this, and you guys are gonna start singing together, okay? All right, ready? Ugh. Don't breathe your stressed out breath, your relaxed breath. Okay, so, so let's try that from the beginning. Um, and then we might play around with a little bit after that. So make this side of the room. Good, okay, so ready? Make new friends, but make new friends, but keep the old honest silver and the old. Make new friends, but keep the old one is silver and the other. Beautiful. Good job, you guys. Okay, I feel like I feel like I might have a little. I feel like I have a group that I might be able to split into some more groups. So, um, how about just a, a wiggly line between? <coughs> yep. You guys are now your own group. You guys are now your own group. And from you guys are now your own group. Yeah. And then you guys are now your own group. Okay. All right. So be ready, I'm going down the line like this. I'm gonna point it when it's time for you to come in. So make, make, come on you guys, make, beautiful. Okay, here we go, ready? Make new friends, but make new friends, but make new friends, but make new friends. But make new Awesome. That was beautiful. You did it. You did it. Good job. Go and take a seat. <clears throat> maybe you felt happy. Um, maybe you were scared, but you overcame that fear and you sang as loud as you could. Maybe you were pleased that you tried, but you sang and hopefully it wasn't too traumatizing. <laughs> and the best part, you can do whatever you want with this gift you were given. If you decide to take up singing, and I hope you do, start in a group, just like now, like what we did, and go from there. Maybe you put more work in and learn to read music. Maybe you don't and you just sing your heart out with your friends. Maybe you've struggled with pitch and you decide to start studying ear training. Maybe you don't and you just sing maybe just a little off key all the time. <laughs> maybe you aren't compelled to sing, but singing is the gateway drug that leads you to the clarinet or the saxophone or the guitar or pan flute, whatever it is. 
Make your own beautifully imperfect sound and carry it with you every day as a joyful reminder that you are part of a long human tradition of music makers. Thank you.